What is going on guys? I'm your host, the one and only, and boy do I have a very special video for you all. Today we're going to take a trip down memory lane. For those of you who have been subscribed to me for a while now, chances are you saw my videos where I reviewed each and every single one of these products. As the year is coming to an end, and as we approach a new decade, I wanted to look back at all the products Apple released this past year. 2019 was a huge year for Apple. Just take a look at their stock for the year and it will give you a pretty good indication at how Apple performed this year. What's interesting is that for 2019, with slowing sales of their cash cow being the iPhone, Tim Apple and his goons had to hold an emergency meeting to please investors once again. Someone over at Apple HQ somewhere in California proposed the idea of releasing four non-traditional products which for the most part are streaming based and are categorized as services rather than hardware. From the addictive nature of Apple Arcade to the new shiny Apple card that shows others they are completely inferior to you because they don't have a titanium card to the godsend that was the MacBook Pro 16 inch. We'll look back at everything and I'll choose my top 5 favorite Apple products of 2019. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Here it is folks every major release of apple from 2019 noticeably absent is my pro xdr display and the pro stand which i am kind of salty about my order is still being processed and will hopefully be shipped out very soon now first things first this may come as a total shocker to everyone but i just like everyone else have opinions shocking i know and what's even crazier is that my opinions have a 99 percent chance of differing from yours in this video, I outline what my top favorite products are. However, I'd love to see what everyone else thinks. As you watch this video, you may agree or disagree with my selections, and that's totally cool. Just drop down a comment and give me your top 5 choices from Apple in 2019. This truly was a super busy year for Apple with so many products being released and was extremely hard to choose, but here are the 5 products or services released by Apple this year that I think are the most noteworthy. So let's begin. At number 5, I'd have to give it to the Apple credit card. Now hold on, hold on, before you go reaching for that dislike button, just hear me out. I don't like it solely because it's a huge flex to slap that titanium card on the table as your waiter or waitress approaches. No. Rather, what I totally dig about it is its simplicity. Now don't get it twisted, I'm pretty well versed on credit and credit cards. Outside of YouTube, I assist people in opening deposit accounts, opening credit cards, and help people refinance homes for a living just to name a few of the things that I do. So I am no stranger to the rather lackluster features the Apple credit card comes with. No intro promotional APR on purchases, no 0% on balance transfers, no incentives like spending $500 within the first 3 months and getting 100 cash back. No, nothing like that. None of these cool features that are pretty standard on most other cards. Not to mention the cash back you get with this card is nothing to brag about. 3% on purchases made directly at Apple or billed by Apple, 2% back whenever using Apple Pay, and 1% on everything else. Although, it was pretty cool that Apple is giving back 6% in the form of daily cash for the 2019 holiday season. But what I love about this card is how tightly integrated it is with iOS and the entire Apple ecosystem. I consider myself pretty financially savvy, so I have a list of all my other credit cards in the Notes apps and update them immediately after a purchase using Mental Math. This strategy I have can be quite cumbersome at times though, especially when you're in a hurry and don't have time to update your balances or have 50 others behind you wanting to use the single self-checkout machine at Walmart even though there's 25 other registers, but for some stupid reason, they all always seem to be closed. You know what I mean? I love that the Apple credit card updates your balances in real time. No need to wait two or three days for your transactions to process. No surprises at the end of the month when your credit card bill arrives. Adding on to it, daily cash, while not impressive in terms of percentages of cash back, is given to you on a daily and consistent basis. No need to wait until the end of the statement cycle to receive your points and all the security features that come along with it. Don't recognize a purchase? Pinpoint it on a map. Discover an unauthorized charge? 
I messaged directly with Apple to dispute it. No need for unnecessary long wait times with atrocious music just to be connected to someone who hates their job and would rather drive off a cliff. The titanium card is just the cherry on top and that's why the Apple card comes in at number 5 on my favorite Apple releases of 2019. Moving on to number 4, and arguably the best bang for your buck this year, the newly revived iPad Air. The best thing about the iPad Air is it combines the best of both worlds with it having close to pro level specs while retaining the price point reasonably low for what you're getting. For $499, you get the A12 chip which is extremely powerful but is of course bested by the beast that is the A12X found in the iPad Pros. You get that gorgeous 10.5 inch fully laminated display with support for the first generation Apple Pencil and has that smart connector so you're able to connect Apple's first party smart keyboard. It's extremely light weighing in at only a pound and is a pretty good contender for college students looking to replace their outdated and oversized laptops with something much more sleek and modern. The introduction of iPadOS has also brought many new features to the iPad line which now differentiates it even more as compared to just iOS. Before, many people, myself included, complained that the iPad's hardware was not being fully taken advantage of by being confined to iOS, essentially making it just one giant iPod that just so happened to have pencil and keyboard support. But now, the iPad Air filled in a gap the iPad line so desperately needed. You have the entry level 10.2 inch iPad with stripped down features and hardware to keep the price down. You also have the top of the line iPad Pros with that beautiful liquid retina display but coming at a very steep price point. And then, right in the middle, like the middle child that is finally loved and admired, is the 2019 iPad Air. You really can't go wrong with it my guy, it's like, just buy it. It's like this iPad is a breath of fresh air in the iPad line, cause get it, it's called the iPad Air. At number 3 is where I'd place the Pro XDR display, if it would have arrived by now. Like I'm sure it's a game changer and all the reviews I've seen have demonstrated that it is a beast in its own category. But since it's not here yet and I haven't had adequate time to truly digest all of its breathtaking 6K viewing goodness, instead I'm gonna have to throw everyone a curveball and say at number 3. I have the iPod Touch 7th generation. Now wait, let me explain. I don't know if it's nostalgia speaking. To be honest, it probably is. But something about the iPod Touch line is just so special. All the other iPods including the Shuffle, Classic and Nano sadly got the boot in 2017 and the iPod Touch was the only remaining iPod left in the Apple family of media players. Now trust me, I get it, having an iPhone kinda defeats the purpose of an iPod, and you'd be entirely correct, I can't argue with that. Your iPhone is an iPod with drastically better cameras, specs at least 3 years ahead of the iPod, and as the name suggests, you're able to make calls, send texts, and add a cellular plan to your iPhone. But the beloved iPod still holds a very special place in many people's hearts. I particularly like it because of its size. Do you know how obnoxious it is to take an iPhone 11 Pro Max with a smart battery case into the gym? Dude, that thing is massive. It's like one of those TI-84 calculators in your pocket. Like forget the 5 pound weights dude, just curl your iPhone 11 Pro Max instead. The 7th gen iPod got a very well deserved spec bump that puts it in line to play all of the games offered on Apple Arcade pretty smoothly. Don't expect discrete graphics card performances though, but the spec bump allowed it to comfortably play almost any game on the App Store or Apple Arcade and allowed the iPod to now support future iterations of iOS for years to come. The reduced form factor and wait hold on, is that a headphone jack? Exactly. I rest my case. In all seriousness though, the smaller screen is fantastic when a smaller and thinner form factor is needed, like when hiking and you want to be disconnected from the world with just you and your downloaded music. I know it's an unpopular choice but nonetheless, it still comes in at number 3 for me. And now, we arrive to our runner up for the year. Have your favorite products match up with mine or are they completely different? Don't forget to let me know down below. At number 2, I have to give it up to the AirPods Pro. Yes sir, I'm sure you guys have probably expected these to be at least in the top 3, and for very good reason. My favorite thing about these is how small the buds actually are with the reduced stem. The customizable rubber tips to accommodate bigger ears such as my Dumbo ears that I got bullied for when I was younger and was told I could fly away with them, but that's besides the point. And must I say it? 
active noise cancellation and transparency mode. You don't know how many times ANC has saved my sanity. Do you have that one really annoying person in your life that never seems to know when to stop talking and shut up? Like it just never stops. Tim Apple said, say less fam, I got you. Just bust out your AirPods Pro and make sure to turn on ANC mode and boom, problem solved. It's so magical. On the contrary, if you want to listen to your tunes but also need to listen for your surroundings or waiting for your name to be called for instance, transparency mode does this quite well. It's pretty weird actually like it's too good. Even sounds better than using your own two ears like I'm not even kidding. Not to mention the seal the AirPods Pro make on your ear canal assures you to get some of the best sound out of headphones this small. Every instrument pounds with ferocity. Every lyric is at the forefront for you to sing along and every pound of the drum or bass is booming with energy. While not the best headphones in the world, not by a long shot, they are leagues ahead of regular AirPods and are worthy of the premium you pay because of all those added features. Music wise, they are slightly better and slightly louder than regular AirPods, but it's funny how the world works. Now having AirPods 2, the regular ones, makes you semi broke. Not quite broke, but you know, close to it, and now AirPods Pros will send you into celebrity status and god tier mode, like it's so stupid to me. And finally, my number one pick for 2019. What do you think it is? Is it Apple Arcade? The iPad Mini? The Beat Solo Pros? No. None of those. While those products are great, my number one for 2019 hands down has to go to the new 16 inch MacBook Pro and I'm sure many will agree with me on this. I chose this for the simple fact that Tim Cook and his goons finally listened to us. Annoying butterfly keyboard replaced with a much more practical scissor style mechanism? Check. Physical escape key? Check. Bigger display with reduced bezels? Check my guy. A modest increase in battery with way better heat dissipation thanks to a slightly reduced chassis? Check. It's like what isn't to love here? And best of all, the price point remained the same. Don't get me wrong, it's still crazy expensive, but thank god the rumors didn't come true that the base model for the new redesigned MacBook Pro would come in at over $3,000. Apple, I have two words for you. Thank you. You finally listened to your consumers and what your pro audience had been asking for for years now. Extreme power in a still relatively compact size with improved battery, a larger display, and that pesky butterfly keyboard finally gone. This is the direction I like to see Apple in. Guaranteed, this will bring back customers that previously strayed away because of your notorious keyboard. I was going to lump in another product Apple released this year that deserves an honorary mention, as a second runner up if you will. That being the iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max. Apple basically did the same thing here, making the iPhone body slightly thicker and slightly heavier for a drastic improvement in battery life. The triple camera system is awesome, that's for sure, but for my use and what is most important for a lot of consumers when purchasing a phone is the improved battery life on the iPhone 11 Pro line which makes it a standout upgrade. The obligatory spec bump is there. The crisper screen with the Super Retina XDR display is there. The enormous improvement to battery is all there. This is likely why Apple stock is doing so well, especially when Apple's wearables such as the Apple Watch and AirPods are seeing record sales. This new forward thinking direction Apple is taking is making me very optimistic for 2020 and the reason why the 16 inch MacBook Pro comes in at number one for me. There are so many products and services Apple released in 2019, it's so hard to just pick five. But this has been my personal list and was super fun to share this video with you guys. As the year comes to an end, I sincerely want to thank each and every one of you who has supported me this far. I'm closing out the year with 20,000 subscribers, what else could I ask for? You guys are honestly the best. Every like, every comment. Every subscriber means the world to me. Thank you all for a fantastic year and here's for everything 2020 has in store for all of us. For better or worse, 2019 will soon be in the books and we will enter a new decade. I only wonder how far the tech world will go in this upcoming year and decade. Subscribe to the channel to be up to date with all the latest tech but most importantly, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll catch you all next year. Have a good one guys.